In this video, I'm going to show you my approach for photographing a panorama. And it's going to be a panorama of one of the most spectacular scenes in Scotland in incredible sunset light. But before I get to that, this was the third day of a landscape photography workshop, backpacking through the mountains of Fisherfield. And from our camp that morning, we had a short walk of around six kilometers, dropping down into a hanging valley and then up the other side to one of the most remote Munros in Scotland, Avasian, where we set up the tents. And I'd planned to be up there on this particular evening because the forecast had looked good for sunset from a few days out, and we certainly had luck on our side. So the sun is coming down and the light is already pretty great. So you can see lovely golden light on the mountains behind me, but this is of course a scene that I've photographed many times before, which does actually take the pressure off a little bit. But there's one shot that I took a long time ago up here that I haven't repeated since. I think it was my very first visit to this mountain. I shot an incredibly wide scene of the view behind me and looking down over the lock that you can't quite see from this position. And I wasn't quite happy with the shot. The colors were just a bit too crazy. I never quite managed to find an edit that I was happy with. So I'm actually really excited to shoot that wide scene again and finally do some justice to it, particularly because we have some heavy cloud cover overhead. So I'm hoping we're gonna get some of that lovely red light. So that's what I'm gonna shoot this evening. Just before I move on to show you guys that view that we're going to photograph, I just wanted to point out why I'm so excited. And that's because we have an amazing gap of blue sky, which the sun's hopefully going to make its way into in 10 or 20 minutes from now. It looks almost certain to happen at this point, which I'm always a little bit worried about saying, because of course you say that and then the cloud fills in at the last minute, but I'm feeling fairly confident at this point. But of course the scene behind me, it is very beautiful now. And actually, because there's not much light down there on the foreground, there's a lovely contrast between the shapes of the Lochan. Uh, and that shadowy area. So I am gonna take a quick shot here and then I'm gonna move on. Some of you might recognize this scene from last year's video and we didn't obviously quite have those conditions on this particular evening, but still a very lovely way to start the shoot. I didn't quite come up with a solution to those clouds at the top of the frame. They're a little bit distracting and cropping them out just leaves the image a bit too tight at the top, but nevertheless, very pretty. Uh, just nothing compared to the scene that I'm about to show you. Here is the scene that I'm going to photograph and I'm at 16 millimeters here. So it is an absolutely immense scene looking down over this inky black lock, Gormlock Moor and towards Benlair and the hills of Torridon. So 
you can't really get a sense of just how vast this is, I guess, on, on a computer screen or on your phone if you're watching this on a phone, but you'll have to just trust me that it's immense. And I can't quite get the perfect position to shoot this. We've got these rocks creeping into the bottom of the frame there and uh, this, this ridge on the left. I guess ideally those wouldn't be there, but I'm not going to go any further because actually I'm on sloping rock here, pretty close to the edge of a near vertical drop. So I'm plenty close enough. Uh, and I'm also going to use a polarizer here because we're shooting at 90 degrees to the sun, which of course produces that amazing side light on the cliffs there. But look at how effectively a polarizer cuts through the haze. It's a really useful tool for mountain photography. And when it comes to shooting the final scene, I'm going to shoot portrait frames at around 35 millimeters uh, to get as much resolution as I can into this scene. So I think I'm gonna set up now and get shooting. So here's my setup and you can see that actually I'm not using an L bracket and that's because my L bracket fell apart. So usually that would allow you to mount the camera here directly above the tripod, which is a preferable because you get less parallax errors and so on, but actually it's perfectly fine to use the drop slot here, which many of you will be doing already, I'm sure. The first thing to make sure when you're shooting a panorama, other than that you've got a, a nice view to photograph in the first place, is that you've actually leveled your tripod. So in this case, I have a bubble level just there. Um, I'm not gonna make the camera focus on that, but it is completely level and that's really important because when you pan the camera around, you can see here, I've put the horizon in the top quarter of the frame. And when I pan around, the horizon stays in exactly the same place so it doesn't distort and bow all over the place. And that's really what you're looking for when you're setting up your camera nice and level or your tripod, I should say. So it's actually this panning base of the ball head that should be perfectly level with the horizon so that when the camera is rotated, the horizon doesn't move. Then in terms of exposure, I am just doing single frame exposures for this panorama, but it's this brightest frame on the right hand side that I'm looking at and I'm checking to make sure that my highlights aren't clipping here on this right hand side of the histogram. So I'm not losing any detail to blown out highlights. And I thought I'd quickly freeze the video here just to explain my camera settings because I've drifted away from my usual ISO 100 and F11 to ISO 200 and F8. And that's because I wanted a shorter shutter speed. I don't generally like shooting with longer shutter speeds when I'm shooting panoramas because things are more likely to go wrong. And I didn't need the additional depth of field of F11, nor did I really need the image quality uh, difference between ISO 100 and 200 because it really is very small. So those are the reasons for those camera settings to get a shorter shutter speed. And you'll see at the end of the video how well that worked out for me. And now that I've done that, I'd like to shoot them left to right for no particular reason. And I frame up my left hand frame and just get shooting. So I know there's going to be lots of shallow detail here because I'm shooting on an R5 and also uh, I can actually see the shadow detail on the back of the camera. So it's pretty clear I'm not going to have any problems there. And I just swing around making sure that I have 30 to 50% overlaps uh, until I've captured the full sweep of my scene and I think this will be the last frame here and uh, yeah I think that's done so what an incredible place to photograph and I'm pretty sure that shot's worked out the sun there is uh, well it's coming down it's obviously very blown out we've got Richard up here and uh, yeah the rest of the groups up up on the hill that's uh, Simon also enjoying the same view as me just an incredible place to be. And I have to say, I am absolutely chuffed to bits with this image. Fisherfield has many great views, but only a few that are untouchably spectacular. And this is one of them. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I am making a book on this area on Fisherfield. And this is one of the scenes that I wanted to make a centerpiece of the book. And so to have it in essentially ideal lighting conditions uh, really was quite a, a treat. So to get this side light on the cliffs, you really need to be there 
between mid-May and mid-July where the sunset is just far enough north to, to side light the cliffs but of course to have the cloud overhead which helps to intensify the sunlight because it blocks out the fill light of the blue sky uh, really was the icing on the cake and of course because I shot this as a panorama there's absolutely bucket loads of detail there too so it really would make a very very large print indeed. So I thought I would actually do a quick comparison between this version and the shot from 2014 which I was continually trying to reshoot and there are a couple of big and important differences for me between the two and as I've grown as a photographer my sensitivity to colour and contrast has uh, well I've just become more particular let's put it that way and that first scene whilst it's pretty does have multiple colours clashing together you've got green and orange and red and blue and it just becomes too much for me it, it's a sort of gaudy color palette and I think I was particularly lucky in this recent trip that because summer was late the grasses were holding on to their winter colors so we had more golden colors in the grasses more muted colors and that meant that the color palette was more coherent and of course the lighting itself is better and you don't have those uh, distracting fluffy clouds at the top of the frame either so there's there's that going for it as well so uh, it really was very lucky to have all those things come together uh, in that one scene but that's uh, why I can be very dedicated sometimes to shooting these single scenes. But before I congratulate myself too much, I thought I would end this video by admitting to a mistake because something I said in the previous video actually turned out by chance to be quite prescient of what would happen on the very next day. You can always shoot a panorama as a single frame and crop. And starting there is definitely a good approach to take uh, because if any of your frames in your series, if you're shooting a panorama, go wrong, then you've lost your shot. So it can actually be a lot easier and more reliable to just shoot a wide frame like this and then crop in. So the photo that I did take from this session, the one that I've already showed you is perfectly well executed technically so that's good but I felt that the light was going to improve more as the sun came down and arguably it did I suppose it got slightly redder and I did shoot a single frame of the wide scene first as a banker and I'm glad that I did although ultimately the earlier image is probably slightly better anyway because when it came to shooting the panorama I'd forgotten to turn the image stabilizer off having shot a little bit of video on my R5 and there's currently a problem with the R5 where it creates this weird kind of swirl effect when you have the lens and sensor IS turned on and so all of my vertical frames from the final shoots from the final panoramas I took as the sun became reddest all have this weird swirl blur that absolutely ruins the image quality so none of those panoramas are usable so the takeaway from that is to always remember to shoot that backup single frame and try and be a little bit conservative when you're shooting these panoramas so that you don't lose everything so I hope you have enjoyed this video uh, I have put up this trip for next year on my website now in my workshops if you'd like to join me we will be doing a different route I haven't decided on that yet uh, but I'm sure it will be another exciting trip and of course if you'd like to see more of this kind of content then please do subscribe to my channel and thanks very much for watching